I think perhaps one of the problems in terms of SAD being accepted by the medical community is that it falls into so many different categories. Poets have written about the effects of the seasons on their spirits. Emily Dickinson comes to mind with her certain slant of light winter afternoons that oppresses like the heft of cathedral tunes. Why would we want to treat a poet with light, you might ask? So the artistic side comes into play. Then there are all the animals with the seasonal rhythms. Hibernating hamsters, hibernating bears. Maybe we should just allow ourselves to hibernate a little bit in the winter. Maybe everybody is a little under the weather. Why make it into a pathology? And so there are many contingencies of people who compete for interest in this particular phenomenon. But I think as a clinician and as a doctor, when you see suffering, you need to treat suffering. And many people with a winter problem, whether you call it sad or whether you call it seasonal pattern or whether you call it the winter blues, they suffer. They lose relationships. They lose jobs. They feel despairing. They don't fulfill their goals and dreams and ambitions because half the year they're not their best selves. When you see suffering, you need to treat it and you need to treat it with anything that works with the fewest side effects. And that's really where I'm coming from. Let's forget these different contingencies and these different interest groups and just focus on a person and a problem and alleviate suffering in every way we can.